develop and test but uh, along with that you need to create your own multiplayer server technology the real time backend and then you need to scale them uh, you need to maintain their uptimes you need to code your own server side logic uh, you also once deployed you also need to worry about uh, maintenance of those servers this requires a uh, lot of it staff and high end engineering technology and then that uh, you need to shell out more dollars for that so what if uh, somebody can take out all the tasks that are not relevant to your game development from the right hand side so do you really need to develop your multiplayer server for the game is it game specific it is not maintenance uptime and scalability not required deployment maintenance with all these remote you don't need expert engineering and it staff and then no more shelling out lot of dollars so uh, this is what this is what essentially gamuga is uh, we take out all the server side tasks for you except your server side logic which we cannot do so everything other than the server side logic will be taken care by us you just develop your server side logic as you are developing your single player game and then deploy it on our backends and then you have the multiplayer game working so this is the sample architecture i'll just go through it so we have uh, we we are cross platform as in we support flash android ios unity and html5 uh, we are also doing marmalade and skira uh, are on the works so this is the device there is a device abstraction layer that is the gemuga cloud where you have multiple servers deployed and then these are the auth servers i mean so you can prevent uh, dos attacks or some kind of uh, you no know, bad players right at that point they do not even enter into the auth cl uh, gemuga cloud so the, the flow is like uh, every user who wants to connect to gemuga cloud has to re retrieve a one time authentication key from the auth servers and then once he retrieves that key he can he can connect to the servers and uh, answer the challenge with the one time auth key i mean this is all technical you can can just leave it out so from from gemuga back uh, cloud you, you also have we also provide you with apis for database servers and http access so those are the database servers and http api servers that you have uh, this is the basic architecture of uh, gemuga so what are the features it's a it's a highly real time very low latency transport uh, fully hosted uh, so the main usp of gemuga is that we have uh, server side scriptability on the back end so you don't need to write your own script uh, uh, other other technologies in this field do not have uh, server side scriptability that is you need to deploy your own multiplayer servers again they just handle the transport they just do message broadcasting between the endpoints so uh, server side we have gemuga has server side scriptability that is our main usp and uh, it's instant deployable so you after you have done development with your game after you are done with development of your game you can actually zip your code and upload it and the backend is deployed so uh, i mean this 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 is all the theoretical stuff but uh, i'll also be showing you a complete drill drill down demo of a real time multiplayer game as we go forward so watch out for that so then uh, there is a on demand there is on demand and auto scaling so our rooms and sessions support up to 10000 uh, concurrent users and and we support my unlimited sessions so it's like uh, uh, if five of you are playing a game it's called a session and in that session thousands of users ten, tens of thousands of users can join and we have multiple uh, you can spawn as many sessions as required as per your user load so uh, this is the front end apis we have we support javascript action script android ios unity so we also have websocket support there is a key value store and there is http api support so uh, no upfront cost for using gemuga it's we have a free plan which you can start off with uh, so if your game takes off only then you start paying us and then no infrastructure investment required so you you spend 0 dollars on any kind of infrastructure free to start with pay as you grow and as your demand grows you can expand and as your demand uh, goes down you can actually uh, fall back to smaller plans okay so what uh, i mean we are done with uh, the features and stuff so we'll we'll actually be walking you through how to develop game on uh, gemuga platform So Gemuga has a concept of room and session. Room is basically a lobby where users join before they create a session and join that session. So session is where users actually play a game. So this is 
this is the api that is available on the on the client side and on the server side this is the javascript api and this is the server side api so we'll walk i'll walk you through those in the examples so this is the basic flow of gemuga so uh, initially uh, on the client side what you do is you is you create a gemuga client object and connect to a room which calls on, on connection there is a on connect callback that is called on connect callback on the uh, client side then is followed up with uh, on connect on the server side so when a user joins from the client side to the server side uh, because of connect to room there is a on connect call on the client side and then there is a on connect a called on the server side then uh, i mean typical flow is basically like this in on connect you do a gemuga dot send to send him the user data and then uh, on message is called again on the client side i'll just show you with examples to i mean it's a real time live drawing application that uh, that is developed using gemuga's framework yes so if if uh, any of you have any machines you can actually join to this url 192168152207 colon 10000 hash1 and you can actually draw with me this is the real time drawing uh, application that we have so i'll just walk you through a bit of code of how this gets developed so what we are doing on the client side is basically uh, on mass move we are collecting the coordinate data here and then sending that data to the server every 250 milliseconds on the server side the server side for that application is just three lines of code on the server side what we have done is as soon as gemuga receives a coordinate data message broadcast it to everybody except that guy whoever sent that message client side receives this coordinate data coordinate data message and draws it on the other guy's screen so this is all that happens by the way if you have any questions i mean please ask right away because i am I'm, i'm digging through code uh, so this part of the code is sending the coordinate data to the sessions as i draw this is uh, the server is broadcasting it to everybody except that guy and then uh, on the client side everybody is getting the uh, coordinate data i'll just show you Uh, so i've told you right uh, we are collecting coordinate data every 250 milliseconds and sending it to the server you can see what is happening on this side so this guy is sending message and that guy is receiving message all this is going through gemu actually so if i draw here this guy will be sending message and that guy will be receiving the message so this happens with just three lines of code uh, without any deployment of servers what what you now have to do once that you have this done you actually zip your uh, file uh, this is the actual code this is the actual code this is the uh, client side and this is the server side So actually, zip this file and upload it, and you have a real-time drawing application ready uh, right away. I've I've only shown the important points in the slide, but so this is what is happening. On mouse move, we are collecting the coordinate data, and you are sending the data here. So 
as the data is received, this is where we are drawing it. So now, uh, this actually has a Flash version and an Android version too. You can actually check out the demos on Gemuga's website. Uh, this has a Flash version on the website. There is an Android version deployed in App Store. All these things work with those three lines of uh, backend code itself. So all the APIs use the same code. Uh, with one backend, you can support multiple front ends, uh, writing your application on different devices. So I'll, uh, this is done. I'll walk you through. So this is one demo that we have created uh, just for uh, this session. I'll just show you the demo first. This is a real-time multiplayer uh, demo. By the way, this is the development server that I'm starting. So this is the actual size, but because of resolution, I am not able to. So this is this is one player in the game. So he can also shoot. So what we we'll change this to is a real-time multiplayer game where multiple users will join and each each of them can play with each other. This is an eight-player game actually. So eight tanks will be spawned. So just ignore the background there, just for aesthetic sense. So you can see that the other tank is moving. Let's let's see. So the score is decreasing and all. This is the gameplay actually. So we you can actually open eight windows or if any of you has a laptop, you can actually join 192, 168, 15, 207, colon 10,000. Uh, and you can actually play with me. So in real time. So I'll I'll just walk you through, yeah. Not able to? You, you, you're connected to Tata Communications? Yeah, so uh, 192, 168, 15, 207, colon 10,000. So which browser? This is, I don't know if that will work. Yeah, you're getting the screen. Uh, it actually, uh, we have, I did not make it WebSockets compatible. What is the device? I didn't get you. I mean, Android or iOS or Android. So uh, somebody joined, yes. Somebody joined, right? Who is this somebody who has joined? The blue, the blue guy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so what happened? You got disconnected. Z, sorry, Z is the key. Where are you? Okay, there may be some bugs, but so you are here. Anyway, so this is the game. I'll just walk you through how you can develop it. It will also be put out on our website, so you can just understand how the game is being developed. So uh, you're using Internet Explorer? Using Internet Explorer or Chrome? It should work. Uh, maybe Firewall or I don't know. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, four things. First is player joining, then is player movement, then is player shooting, then is player hitting. These are the four uh, concepts that we have here. So on player join, what we achieve is that when two users join the, uh, join the game, you can see both their tanks. Uh, that is what is covered with player join. So let's see. Uh, as soon as I uh, open that uh, colon 10,000 URL, uh, we connect to Gemuga server using connect to room. And then on the server side, this code is what is called gemuga.onconnect. What it does is essentially assigns a UID to the user. And then these are the two important lines. 
gamuga dot send me spawn and other spawn me spawn is sent to the guy who sent that message and other spawn is sent to the sent to all other people something like this so whenever uh, a new player joins room sends me spawn to the new player and other spawn to all the other players so that is what we are doing here gamuga dot send connection id is the guy who joined broadcast accept is broadcast to everybody except the last argument so that is me spawn and other spawn so with me spawn what is the data that we are sending we are sending the uid of the user c is the color assigned Ign there is some logic missing in between so ignore that c is the color assigned and op is the other player data because uh, once a user joins he needs to know where the other guys are to for him to draw on his own screen so we send player data which contains the players data their colors and everything to the guy who just joined and to all the other users we send the uid and the color and we know the predefined position based on the color so and we are also creating player data for the currently joined user so on the client side what we are doing whenever we get a me spawn message we are creating a new bitmap animation using a sprite sheet that we have we are showing a help bar and then setting the properties and adding it to stage and for all the other tanks that are there okay so that should be me data of op this should be me data of op so for all the tanks that are in me data we are actually creating uh, we are we are creating the other tanks adding their help bar setting them adding them to stage and then updating the stage i'll just show you the code okay there is some error so this is the actual me spawn code so the first part is my tank and the second part is the other colors other other guys uh, tank and then in room dot lua you can see what i have just noted so gamuga dot on connect uh, the first part is just uh, def uh, getting the color and then me spawn other spawn and then the player data so this is this is what helps you uh, to just draw one player on all the other players and in that player all the players who have already joined so you are understanding right so when when a new user joins on his screen we draw everybody else on all the other screens we draw the newly joined guy so this is what is enabled with gamuga dot on connect and the me spawn and other spawn parts so there are lot lot of people who have joined okay so uh, what happens at the other player who receives this message i mean you saw that me spawn uh, adds the guys tank and all the other tanks what happens at the other guys is we we create one more bitmap and uh, set the properties and add it to stage so that is what happens so the players are now joined everybody is in sync uh, everybody has to be in sync so we do player movement syncing now so uh, on the client side uh, this this is a html5 game we are using uh, create js as the html5 game engine so that has a that has a concept of frames per second and the function tick is called for every frame so you can look up more on easel js or create js uh, on the, on the on the internet but then uh, function tick is called every uh, for every frame uh, the current rendering speed is uh, 50 milliseconds per frame so uh, if the tank is moving we get the cost value of it uh, basically we get the x and y increase them by by the speed of the tank and then send that positions to the server so to make the tank move what we are doing is adding in x and y the speeds and then sending the positions to the server for every tick so on the server side what we do is uh, so on the server side what we do is as soon as we get the position we send the position data to everybody else so this this is what happens as soon as all other players receive position data they update the current tanks position data as whatever is received i'll just show you okay i'm just shutting down the server and restarting it don't don't join i want to show something here so 
you can see that uh, this guy has joined. He's received a me spawn message. He also sending a IPOS. Uh, ignore that, which is the initial position. So uh, you can see what the me spawn message that he gets and he gets, what he gets and he gets. This me spawn message has no OP. This me spawn message requires, this is the second guy who has joined. So he also needs to draw the red guy. Red guy has already joined. So the red guy's data is in that uh, OP, color one position. So uh, I mean, if you're, if you're unable to follow, you can actually look up the code later. So you can actually see what is happening. I'm sending a position uh, coordinates, POS, as this guy is moving. So, and that is the POS message that is being received by the other guy. Now let's see what happens if this guy moves. So when this guy is moving, uh, this guy is sending position data, the LO. And then that data is being received by data is being received by the first guy who has already joined and his position is being updated. So is it understandable or so Greek? So if you have any questions you can ask. So uh, what Gamuga is doing in between is just broadcasting their positions to one another as this is happening. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, so uh, every moving player sends a position message to room, which it broadcasts to everybody else except that guy in POS, and the other guys update their positions based on whatever is received from the in the argument. Okay. Now. Uh, I can I can actually send any POS message uh, that is possible because I can act, so what is my speed? My speed is four pixels per second. In this game, the speed is four pixels per second. I can actually change the POS message that I am moving at forty pixels per second. Nobody is validating the position data, right? So as I said, the position data that is being received by me is just being sent to all the other guys that they are moving. What is the speed at which I'm moving? Am I jumping? I'm disappearing here and appearing somewhere else? Because I can actually change the position data and nobody is cross-checking it. So this is where you need server-side authentication, server-side validation of the objects. So uh, with GameUI, you can actually do that right on the server-side without having your own infrastructure because we give you a full-fledged full programming language. So is it secure? It is not. So the current room code that I've shown is not secure. So we'll, we'll try and do some validation in the backend. So you can see this part. So anyway, this if line. This if line is basically saying uh, if the change in position is less than 4.1, if the straight line distance between the, the current position and the last position is less than 4.1, then only accept it. Otherwise, disconnect the guy. So what you're doing is square root of his last position minus current position squared plus last position x, last position x minus last current position x squared plus uh, last position y minus current position y squared. So one contains uh, x and two contains y. So if, if that is less than 4.1, why do we do 4.1? Just for rounding errors. So uh, we update the position data. Otherwise, that guy is trying to hack in, and then let's disconnect him, invert or disconnect. So. so now uh, player shooting. So in the same tick, if the player is Pressing the Z key, what we do is create a new button, uh, sorry, new bullet, and send the new bullet's data to the room. So these are all you can you can uh, we are just setting the position of the bullet based on the position of the tank, uh, adding the velocity for the bullet as 10 pixels per second, and then increasing the ID, setting the ID of the bullet, and then sending it to the Gameuga server. So now what uh, Gameuga server does is. It takes NV position and broadcasts it to everybody except that guy. So they can also draw the bullets as 
as they are spawned by this guy. So this is the client side. So as soon as he gets, as soon as the other player gets an NB message, he spawns a new bullet and adds uh, the data, and then it's it's shown on the screen. So you can see he's sending an NB message, which is being received by people here. So so this is shooting, and that is this is sending the NB message, and this is receiving the NB message. So in the NB message, F is the ID, F is the guy who is shooting, and B contains uh, the X, the Y, the velocity, and the bullet ID. So that is what we are sending over there. This guy also shoots. This guy sends the bullet message, and that guy receives the bullet message, and he and he is showing the bullets on the screen. So it is understandable or not? Okay. So now uh, we have to. Now what we have to do is, so as player is shooting, he's sending an NB message, and that is being received by the, all the other people. Uh, but then again, uh, I can actually spawn bullet anywhere I want. In the current code, because the room is not validating, I can spawn the bullet anywhere I want. But that hence NB messages also need to be validated. So. Same thing. What we are doing is NB message. Uh, a bullet is always at a eight distance. Uh, sorry, a within the radius of a circle within a circle of radius eight from the center of the tank, because we are spawning it at a uh, distance of eight from the center. The bullet that is spawned has to be within the circle of radius eight from the center of the tank. So that is what we are checking here. So same. Uh, the spawn position minus uh, the bullet, uh, the tank position should be less than eight point one. If it is. Then send the message, broadcast the message. Otherwise, disconnect the user. So that that would be an invalid bullet. But uh, invalid bullet comes because he's trying to hack in. So disconnect the user. So now comes player hit. Player hit is a bit complex. So I have written down pseudo code of the uh, hit logic. So for each bullet that I shot, and for each of the other tanks that are present, check if bullet hits tank. If it is other tank health minus minus health bar you need to decrease the uh, redness of the health bar and then if the other tank's health is zero blast it and then send the hit to all the uh, to gemoga backend so i think you have not seen the hit demo right so you can see as it is hitting the red bar size is decreasing it has a life of 30 so if you hit 30 bullets it will blast so that is what we are doing with the hit part so in the uh, if we send a message of type hit to gemuga backend with the with these details the details is other tank which got hit and the bullets uh, the bullet the tank which hit it and the bullet id so the backend the backend takes it uh, and broadcast it to everybody else except the except the guy who shot the bullet, and then uh, it is received by everybody else, and the same thing is replicated. You get the tank tank's health minus, and then if the tank health is zero, blast it. So uh, in essence, what we are doing is we are sending out hit data from the player to all the other players where they are replicating the effect of hit. This is this is in fact the most insecure code in our backend because I can actually send a hit message. I mean, if you can write JavaScript, you can actually send a hit message with whatever data you want, and then say that the tank got hit. You, whichever tank you want to hit, you can just just add that other tank dot id. In fact, you can do it on the in the in the console that you have here. You can actually type in because gc is a global variable. You can actually do gc dot send. So this is the most insecure code. So what do you need to do to make it secure? Uh, 
for every nb message that is being received on the server side you need to store it you need to store all the bullets that are in the stage in the scene currently and then when a when a hit message is received we all we know the bullet id that, that uh, hit the tank the other tank so what you need to do is retrieve the tank's position retrieve the bullet's current position you know the position when the bullet was generated the starting position of the bullet you need to extrapolate it understand where the bullet is now and then do the same check that you have done on the client side i'll sh i'll show the code and then if it is hit then only send the hit message so i haven't done it on the server side but that is what needs to be done to protect hacking of hitting messages hit messages i'll just show you the code so this is the this is the hit code for b in my bullets for t in other tanks check if the bullet is hitting the tank this is the width of the tank is 32 the width of bullet is 3 so check if the bullet is hitting the tank then reduce the health of the bullet if the health is 0 set it blast and send the hit message on receiving the hit message on receiving the hit message based on the tank id you retrieve the tank which date of zero contains the tank id that got hit uh, so you retrieve the tank decrease the tank's health change the health health bar of the tank and then if the health is zero blast it so this is this is what has been okay. so that that part is done so uh, same thing so uh, player who hit sends a hit message to room you need to validate the hit message and send uh, the hit message to everybody uh, in the uh, to all the other players so this is the hit message so uh, the current implementation of demo uh, i mean uh, the backend is very simple i mean we are not doing any latency compensations uh, we are not doing we are not extrapolating the position based on the lag of the user uh, there are uh, the current implementation is also sensitive to fps so if i have a lower fps uh, system i mean if my machine is not able to process faster uh, the bullet the tank will not move uh, tank will move very slowly while the other tanks are moving very fast because they they can maintain uh, so the other tanks are able to send a message uh, uh, pos for every 50 millisecond based on the fps they can send a message of pos every 50 millisecond but if my computer is slow i cannot send a message of uh, message pos every 50 millisecond if i am sending a uh, message every 10 millisecond i'll be moving five times slower than them that should not be possible when you are doing a multiplayer game i mean i am i am i am it, it, something is gravely wrong with my uh, positioning i mean i am moving very slowly in that game so what i need to do is make it insensitive to fps so how do you how do you make it insensitive to fps in the position data you can actually embed the time stamp and check if the time stamp is being received uh, sorry uh, to make it insensitive to fps you need to use lock step protocols what is lock step is we wait for 50 milliseconds to receive input from everybody only then we send the position data to everybody else so if the guy is sending me faster position data we do not do anything we, we just take the uh, first pos data that we receive and we send it to everybody else so that is lock step protocol you can look up uh, on that and then uh, to to cater to lower fps uh, uh, players you can actually do uh, simple thing uh, okay so for players with faster fps uh, what you can do is embed the time stamp and then uh, in the in the pos message and check if the time stamp is uh, less than 50 milliseconds and then uh, discard the message if it is lesser than 50 milliseconds because he is sending a message faster than 20 frames per second so that guy will be moving very fast so you can do that kind of thing but lock step a protocol is one which helps you sort solve both problems higher fps and lower fps problems so these are the kind of uh, changes that you need to do you also need to do lag do lag compensation which is uh, i send a message of my pos to the server the server sends it to the other guy by the time this this thing is done on the internet it can be at least uh, uh, 200 millisecond to 400 milliseconds 
So I'll be I'll be seen on the screen where I am not at the current position. So you need to do that kind of lag compensation. So all this is out of scope. I mean, I think this 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 itself has taken the time. So uh, I'm not presenting that. The, it's not also implemented in the code. Uh, one more thing is uh, uh, interpolation that you can do. That is, uh, uh, if you do not receive position messages at the time that you need to receive, you can actually interpolate and extrapolate the positions based on the previous velocity, the previous uh, rotation that they have, and things like that. So uh, I mean, there are uh, documents out there where they tell you how to create uh, in detail multiplayer games, but uh, this is what is using GameOver. This is what is possible. So that's it. Uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, 